In last week's mini episode, I was talking about intermittent fasting, pros, cons, uh, shortcomings, things that happen. So I mentioned, I really talked about the 16-8 version and another type that I think is kind of popular, but maybe it's not that popular, is the prolonged fast made popular by Dr. Walter Longo because it is especially useful if you have a predisposition to neurodegenerative diseases or we're looking to prevent cancer, right? And there's a lot more to discussions about types of cancers. And I actually have a couple really great episodes with Dr. Arthur Frankel about cancer. And then I've also in Should Your Test Your Hormones talked about cervical and breast cancer based on 4-OH estrogen. So side notes. Anyway, I did this prolonged fast. So Vulture Longo has this company. In his book, you can do this generic thing. And basically, you consume food, but it simulates the benefits of fasting, which the benefit is autophagy or programmed cell death to basically do janitor work on diseased cells. So we want to get rid of cells so they're not replicating. This is a natural process, but it just like massively upregulates it or accelerates it. Now, I personally really like to eat. So this doesn't even really sound that fun to me, but I had some boxes <laughs> laying around of this prolonged fast and it's five days and it shows up in this large box and then there's five individual day boxes. And basically there's like a soup and these like nut based bars and kale crackers and olives and literally every morsel of food is like delicious because it is barely anything. You cannot be doing like a bunch of physical activity or anything like you should not ever consider doing this in an unsafe way. Like if you have that low of energy, you have to really conserve it. So anyway, I have children and I am the primary cook in my household. And doing something like this is super lame when you have a family because one, having a really positive food relationship or like conveying a really positive food relationship around your kids is so freaking important. (laughs) So we don't raise another generation of people that like hate themselves in the mirror. And so you may know that my mother was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis in March, which is kind of a gnarly autoimmune condition that affects the way you breathe and you swallow. So she had a G tube, meaning she was getting her nutrition through a tube in her stomach. She was not able to swallow or eat fully. So this summer, I had spent, basically, I tried to, in the early months of her diagnosis, go down there and try to spend a few days with her. She lives a few hours from me. And so I arranged some time around my birthday to go visit her this summer. And so I was going to leave like the day after my birthday. So I decided while she can't eat, I'll just eat my very limited amount of food. So it's like, it's very easy to pack along because it's like some dehydrated soup. And it's actually quite tasty, but it's some dehydrated soup and just some like, they're good foods, but packaged stuff. So anyway, so I go down there and I get through the first four days of this fast because I think, eh, well, worst, best case scenario. And the other thing is to do to keep busy during this time. So I went down there and I was working on the fast and it was kind of a goofy time because it was around my birthday and normally I'd want to like do fun things for my birthday, (laughs) but it was just the way the chips landed. And so I decided to go there during that time. Well, my sister-in-law decided to plan like this miniature surprise with a cake where she and another sister-in-law and their kids came over on my birthday, which was day four of my five day fast. And it was kind of awkward because I was like, oh, yes. I mean, they kind of knew what I was doing. They weren't really sure if they should bring the cake, but they're also amazing and they want to bring this cake. So they bring this cake. I'm cutting the cake. I'm serving the cake. I'm looking, I'm like taking bites here and there. And so what I decide to do is I try to hold the fast by like not consuming half the day's foods of the fast and like consuming the energy calories from the cake, like little bits and pieces here. So I have this cake. I go to bed. We're all good to go. I can't remember if I kind of felt like I think I had a headache because it was just like maybe not a good choice that night. The next day I decide I'm sort of like sick of this. I'm bored with it. It's day five. (laughs) I'm really like letting on all my human attributes right now, which is fantastic. So I feel like I'm sick of this at day five. And I go for a walk down on the waterfront with my sister-in-law, who's at perma camping, uh, very close to where my parents live. And she's like, oh, yeah, if you're feeling like bored and are done with your fast, I'm, I'm happy to make you an omelet with these eggs that I have, you know, at my camper. And so I'm like, I love to eat. Yep, I will always take food if someone wants to make it for me. So this is not what you should do. If you have not really eaten like full on real foods for several days, like you should not jump straight into whole food, like something to die, like difficult to digest. <laughs> you should probably start with like broths and soups and like smoothies, things like that. Those are great things to start with. So I just decide, yep, I'm going to go ahead and have some omelet like because I'm just like sick of this I'm gonna eat so I go ahead and do that which my digestive system responded in full force and it was like whoa time to go so I hope you're really enjoying this by the way 
So wakes it up. I promise there's like, it gets good. It gets better. So I eliminate completely and through that process. And so anyone who gets diarrhea, I think that this can be an important thing. And this is why it's important to go through these not good experiences because it's a reminder. So now I'm like really uptight about electrolytes. So when people are going into ketosis, they can get something called the keto flu and it feels like the flu and you feel like crap. So after I eliminated, I immediately felt like death and I curled up in a ball and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like death. And then I laid there in a ball and I thought, okay, Krista, what is wrong? (laughs) You know what is wrong. Okay. You probably have keto flu. Okay. First line support, you do electrolytes. Cause what I had done, here's where I went wrong. I was skipping the stuff that came in the box that was already accounting for this, including like electrolyte support. And so they also have stuff in there that like prevents muscle catabolism or breakdown. So anyway, not good to skip this stuff and to do it wrong, honestly. Like I should have just broke out the day before and been done and transitioned properly. That would have been more intelligent. Instead, I laid curled up in a ball feeling like death. I'm like, okay, Krista, electrolytes. I need electrolytes. And by the way, I'm supposed to take my mom to speech therapy, but it's like the year of COVID. So you're not like, oh, hey, just a second. I feel like I have the flu. One moment, please. So I didn't say that. I just like sat there in my agony and thought about what I was going to do. So I crawled to the kitchen and I sprinkled some mineral salt in my hand because mineral salt is a great source of electrolytes. And so I look it out of my hand and I crawl back to the bed. I'm like, oh, I feel a little bit better. Okay. So I crawl back out of the kitchen and I like sprinkle more salt in my hand and lick it out. I crawl back to the bed and I'm like, ooh, I feel like quite a bit better. So I do it one more time. I go out there and I lick more salt off my hand. And this is like a 10 minute span of time. I am like healed. Thank you, baby Jesus. Totally healed. Feel like a mad million bucks. I'm ready to go. And my mom's like, Krista, I'm going to be late for speech therapy for her condition. And so I like, I'm ready to go. We go. And as we drive there, I tell her what happened to me. And she just is like, oh, good grief woman. So the moral of this story is electrolytes are super important in ketosis. I just wanted to tell you about the time I totally messed up my prolonged fast and how I didn't do it right. And the side effects of like having diarrhea or like dumping after like waking up your digestive system. So anyway, I'm not suggesting you do anything like this, but I wanted to share that like having your electrolytes off makes you feel like ass. The end. I hope that was fun for you to listen to. All right. Have a great day. Thanks everyone. You know, I've really spent some time reflecting on my own phases of burnout this year and past years, and I know I'm not the only one that has gone through or goes through these peaks and valleys. And while sometimes you need lows to appreciate the highs in life, some valleys are pretty difficult for both your mind and your body in a very literal physical way. This year, I'm feeling really pulled to help others work through burnout, nourish their adrenals, mind, body, and spirit, and have some incredible things in store to help you feel refreshed and renewed. I invite you to take my quiz, Are You Approaching Burnout?, to assess your stress resilience and find out more about how to help you overcome it. Go to kristabigler.com forward slash burnout to take that quiz, and it'll also be in the show notes.